What is design positioning? This is the ability to position a design based on the exact points in an, your hoop or on your fabric. So what I've done is I've drawn a line kind of sideways here, and I've pulled up my name, Sarah, and I'm going to show you how to position this along the line. We're going to do kind of two parts to this. This will be the first part, and then we're going to take another design and meet it up with itself a, a second time. It's super fun to, to do this. So go ahead and just pull up your design and touch go. Design positioning is on the next screen. So down here is the symbol. It has a little flower with four arrows. Touch that. And what I want to do is walk you through what and how this works. So you have four different steps here. Step one, two, three, and four. Step one and three, notice they are shown with the picture of a flower. That means you're gonna be looking at the screen. You're looking at your design. Steps two and four show you a hoop. That means you're gonna be looking over here at the hoop and where your needle is. So first thing to do, let's go ahead and touch step one. And step one, it'll even say at the top to remind you, move the red cursor to set a locked point. Now this is where you'll really want to kind of zoom in here. You can zoom, I like to always do the zoom to box. And then I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna be lining up the lower part of the, the line here, or of the design to the line. So see this little red plus? You can go ahead and you can drag it to wherever you want it to be. But if you want to go ahead, we're going to get it really close. I'm going to go ahead and set it right at the edge of the lower part of the S. Then you can use the little arrows here and here to tap it into position. So I don't always use the slidey uh, part of the screen. So go ahead and get it close and then move it into position. Okay, step one. Step, that's locking the... Um, moving the red cursor and setting the lock point. So that's a set point. Step two is back to the hoop. So we're gonna look over here. It says move the gray locked point to the chosen position on the fabric. Check the needle on the fabric. So I'm gonna turn the hand wheel once I get close and see if I'm actually on the line. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this. I'm kind of, I'm looking over here at my hoop. And yes, since I'm so zoomed in, I'm gonna actually run off the screen. So zoom to all. And now I can bring this down. Uh, even further, actually, let's zoom to, whoop, there we go. Okay, so I'm in the near vicinity of my needle to that line, but I know I'm not all the way there. Now, when you use the little arrows to kind of get you fine-tuned, they hold the stylus on the screen until it actually starts to move. It's very small increments. It's uh, a tenth of a millimeter, so that's very small. So sometimes people don't say, oh, it's not moving, and actually it is. So here we are. I can tip my needle down, and I'm actually on the line. So that point is set. Now, if I leave the needle partially down and I go to move this, it comes up with a nice message. It says raise needle, but there's a box on it. It says allow lowered needle position. Position. So if you check this box, it's pretty much saying, I promise not to leave my needle in the fabric while I move, but we'll let you leave the needle much closer to the fabric for a little easier viewing. So I'm going to check that box, touch OK, so that doesn't come up uh, all the time. OK, so we have the first part is great, but my design is not perfectly parallel because I didn't hoop straight. So I hooped a little crooked, whether that's because the garment doesn't, um, you know, maybe you're up against sleeves or a collar and you kind of have to just get it in there any way you want. This is what I love to call hooping crooked. So that's what we've done. So step three, now we need like a point so we can spin it, so we can twist it. So we're gonna zoom back in again. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom to box. I'm gonna get kind of a, an area over here by the A that would make sense. So if I go ahead and touch, we get that red cross. So it says move the red cursor to set a, the point to rotate. So this will be my new needle. We'll just kind of put it right close by there, tap it into position. Now step four is gonna do a rot rotate the red cursor to a chosen position on the fabric and check the needle. So here we go. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Well, actually, you're going to see. See how it's starting to twist? Let me go ahead and zoom to all. All right, fly that away so we can see it. So what I'm doing is I'm watching until my needle will then be even with my line. Tap that down. It's just a hair a little high, so we'll bring her that's her. Actually, that goes the other way. Bring her down. 
And now we are perfectly lined up. So my name is even with my line and it is ready to sew. That's how easy it is for design positioning um, as you go. We can also go around and see where it's going to actually stitch, give you an idea. Actually, it's kind of deceiving because of how that actually is. But once we go back over here, it's going to go ahead and start at our first stitch, which may or may not be actually on the line. So don't get too excited if it's not on the line when you start to stitch. But now once it's going to sew, we're really all done. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and let this stitch out. But there's a design in your machine that is a puzzle piece. And I'm going to bring up the puzzle piece. I'm going to stitch it one time up here on the top part of the hoop. And then, and I'm going to kind of just kind of twist it so it's kind of sideways. And then I'm going to show you how you do it with another design. We're going to take that puzzle piece and we're going to puzzle it together and really show you how you can do this. You know, so many times when you go ahead and do a design, and I'll show you a sample next, where you can go ahead and draw your lines, but every time you hoop, you might not hoop completely straight. And this is what you're gonna use. You can get it in there sort of straight, and then you go ahead and connect the two pieces. And this is how you do endless embroidery without having to worry about getting it hooped correctly every single time. See how perfect that is along the line? That is what design position is all about. So don't worry about hooping straight. You can just hoop and then adjust your design once you get it on your screen. Now here's an example of some design positioning. So this is a single design, okay? So one of those. But if you wanted to repeat it, so put this design next to it and then keep on stitching out, you would get the table runner version. And you can't even tell where the stops and starts are. Now on endless designs, there is actually a little mark that is usually stitched. So that makes it really easy to line up. Now what we had done is we had gone ahead and drawn a line all the way through the entire table runner uh, vertically and then did some horizontal ones too, just so we would have a, pl uh, a reference point. And we could go in and actually re-hoop the second time willy-nilly and then just go ahead and tweak the design based on if that line was not perfectly straight in the hoop. So we could go in and twist the design to adjust it to be perfectly straight uh, when it actually sews out. So that was kind of a fun, and it's so cute. Love it. So what I'm going to do is I've already brought up the design of the little puzzle piece that's in the machine. This is a great exercise to do, and I highly recommend that you try this and maybe put a couple of these together. I'm going to just kind of do it in this upper part of my hoop, and I've set it to kind of just rotate just a a little bit. We'll just kind of tweak it to this side. And you'll notice that once we go ahead and stitch it, that when you go to put the next one, this piece, when set beside it, would be the tulip to where the little uh, kind of bulb part is and vice versa. So you can actually do more than one of these. Yes, you can set this on screen and get it all um, laid out together, no problem, but this is a good exercise. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to quick stitch this. It's a one color design. It doesn't take long to, to stitch it all. And then, it, um, and then we'll go ahead and show you how we can design position it uh, right into position. So now that one is done, we'll just leave this design on screen and just jump over to the design positioning area. So what we wanna do is here's our second, or here's how we're gonna move the design. So since it's already kind of tilted anyway, you know what, I'm gonna back up. So we actually, you might say, reset this. So it makes more sense, because otherwise we just slide it. It's already rotated. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna select that design and a little undo, does that do it? Uh, well, we'll just go back and um, tweak it into a random another position. Okay, so we'll pretend we're bringing it in straight and go ahead and, and bring it in. All right, no cheating if you're doing this as, a, as an exercise. Okay, design positioning. Ready for step one? We need to move the cursor to match up. So we need this piece over here to match up with this piece over here. So let's just go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to zoom, not to all, but that's a good start. Zoom to box, kind of get in that general area. And we'll move that little red plus to just about right on top of that. I'm going to just line up that corner with this corner here. So step two is now we're going to look over here and get that design to move exactly where we want it to be. So let's give that a good slide till we're in that near vicinity. Sink that needle down and then, oh, yep, check the box, you bet. I promise not to leave the needle in the fabric. 
while I'm moving this around here. So we're just going to tap, tap, tap that into position until my needle will go in the exact same hole that the de design per did the first time. All right, we should be, I like it. Okay, so step one and two, that just shifts the design where it needs to be. Let's just check, are we still in the hoop? Yes, we're still in the hoop. And now, step three is to set another lock point. Let's do it right down here on this corner. We'll zoom in, zoom to box, get it nice and close so we can see when we're actually on that little corner and just bring that right into position. Okay, so in step four, we're looking over here at the hoop and now we're just gonna swing that into position. I always forget which way to go, go the other way. All right, until the needle will go into the corner stitch of the design previous. This is so easy, but you gotta do this a couple times to really make it stick in your brain what you're actually doing. And because you can line up on any stitch, because every design will be slightly different, you, they're not all gonna be have straight lines like this does, it will definitely be different for every time you do a different design, what you're lining up to. Okay, so there we are set into that little corner there. We'll touch okay, and we'll see how we stitch out. Let's zoom out all the way, zoom to all, so you can kind of see how it's tilted. It looks like it's matching what we have already done. And so we'll go ahead and start and see the final results. It's always fun to watch this because you're like, go, 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 and you're like, you, you know it's gonna hit it, but you still wanna watch it actually come right even with the line that you uh, lined it up with. Okay, here we go, time for the proof and right over the top of the other line. Woohoo! All right, looking fabulous. And you know what, if you're just a hair off, nobody's gonna really look really, really close. You're gonna find that you are, you'll see the overall design as you've put the whole table runner together, or the whole entire uh, collection, endless embroidery. Remember, use this with your majestic hoop. That's that separate purchase hoop, but it's big. And so sometimes when one design stitches and then you flip it, you might need to adjust that second design just a little bit because it is so big and there can be a little bit of an adjustment that needs to be made. All right, this is how design positioning works, but do give yourself a couple tries to kind of really put it into perspective the, those two, two to four steps. Sometimes I only use two steps. I don't always use four steps until you have to like tweak it or twist it. And here is our final result. Look at that. I'm lined up. And so, again, if you want to just kind of practice again, you could bring one more. Um, you probably aren't going to get it into this hoop, so you would need to re-hoop, which kind of gives you the whole thing. Kind of re-hoop it cricket on purpose and watch how good your machine and you will line this all up.